commandment, thou shalt not covet, is the touchstone, the cornerstone of everything else that happens in our lives. So we have to guard our hearts. And then, I haven't touched too much on it, but here I will. How do we, in a positive way, answer that negative? Well, in this last one, the positive way that we answer coveting is by giving. Giving abundantly. Giving generously. The greatest instrument of giving in all of history is Christ's body, the Christian church. We have given more as a church than any other entity in the history of the world. And we continue to do so. You know the second greatest entity of giving? Christian business. We Christian businesses reach out. We bring food. We bring health. We, we heal people. We send missions out. We support our church missions. So Christian businesses are reaching out and giving. And that's what God calls us to do. He calls us to reach out within our community and throughout the world to give and give generously. And when we do, we become, again, we fulfill his mission. We become his body and blood. We become the disciples who go out and wash feet. We become his body witnessing to the world. And we fulfill his commission. Go out and make disciples of all of them. Renfro Industrial is doing that. William is doing that. A great witness. Thank you for all that you do, William. And, and all of you, you know, thank you so much. Um, I tell you what, it's a privilege. I was reading just last week, an author was talking about those who are afraid to witness. And he said, you know, if, if you have somebody you really love, you want to tell people about it. You, you want to go out and tell them what they're like. You know, when I get to talking about my grandchildren or my children or my wife, I get excited. I, you know, I, I'm like, you yeah, know, let me tell you what Kathleen did the other day or, or, or Riley, who is, is one of my newest great-grandchildren. By the way, we're, I'm an evangelical Catholic, um, so I'm, I'm a mixture of an ecumenical guy, but good Catholics. We only had two kids. <coughs> Our kids have had kids young and then their kids had now, so we're now a great grandfather at 66, almost five times over. So, but I get excited about that. And to me, going out and talking about Jesus Christ, that excites me. Because I tell you what, I love Jesus. He loves me a million times more than I could ever love him. We have only touched the surface when we give, when we reach out, when we love others. We touch the surface of an ocean, of a universe that is the love of God the Father and Jesus Christ for us. So I'm going to tell you, you know, I, I thank you so much for the privilege of being here, sharing with you a little bit, and sharing in prayer and talking. Um, I've left a couple of books there. I have another here. I have a couple more if you want. Um, you're welcome to take it, read it, and um, I, I just ask you to do me a favor. You're going to take it, read through it, and then pass it on to someone and make a comment um, on Amazon or um, you know, on, on my website. I appreciate hearing back from you. Anybody have any thoughts or questions? What type of insurance did you sell? Property casualty and risk management. So, Was that a tough industry to, to be a witness in? Not really. No, um, I, I, my elevator speech was, was to anybody, I do, for, I do for your business or your home what Jesus Christ does for your soul. I make it whole. <laughs> so, so that was, and I offended a couple people that way. The last time people were like, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so so uh, yeah, it gave me an opportunity to talk about Christ. And it's funny. When I visited the Christian Chamber, our, our agency is um, mostly they're Presbyterian, <coughs> and so. Um, but it was funny the gentleman who was up there at the, at the Charleston Christian Chamber or the uh, Columbia Christian Chambers, he did a poll and he said, "Okay, how many, how many Baptists from here? How many Evangelicals? Yep, yep, both pieces. Now, you Presbyterians, you don't have to raise your hand. I know you're quiet." <laughs> and it was funny, but true. And that's our agency. In that way, what's really gotten me out, you know, I'm, I'm retiring, moving away from insurance 
into speaking because that's what God put on my heart listening to. Bold witnesses like William who make it, you know, part of the mission statement, part of going out and speaking about, you know, their love of Jesus Christ is we sort of quietly do it and we, you know, we, we do good works and we take care of our people and, and we're practicing these Ten Commandments right in our workplace. But Jesus isn't forefront there. And that's, you know, I'm not the owner, so it wasn't part of my place. And I had them in there and talk about it, but we kept it quiet. And I, I, that, I think, is in today's day, with the way culture is today, we can't do that anymore. We're called to stand up and witness. And we've got to do it boldly. Renfro's doing it. You know, Polydeck is doing it. I tell you what, Spartanburg and Greenville are fired up. And they're coming down to fire Charleston up too, so. Appreciate it. Tell, tell us a little bit about Charleston. You know, we uh, yeah. we we'll have a chamber there, we'll have our business there. What what's your what's the spiritual climate of Charleston right now and the way you see it? Well in the last chapter of the book I talked, Charleston is the holy city and it's called that for a good reason. I mean but it's all sort of underground. You know, you get up here, it's out there. But down Charleston, it's, you know, there's a church on every corner, and there are, are there, there's, a, you know, a Catholic school, and an Evangelical school, and a Baptist school, and, you know, Presbyterian, and, and Charleston Southern University, which is a great, great resource. They're wonderful. They are the spiritual center of Charleston in that sense. They are leaders in bringing Christ out to business and out to the community and education. But it's sort of like it's like our agency was. It's a little quiet and underground, you know. And so I think that what I've seen in, in the last 15 years with with we, we have um, LifeWorks, which is every quarter they have about two or three hundred business business people come up to hear someone speak about Jesus Christ in the workplace. Uh, we have a, a breakfast once a year. This past year, we had 1,100 people show up to hear a Christian witness. These are all business people. And then God in the Workplace fills in the eight months around that. And it's a workshop specifically to, to have somebody talk about the nuts and bolts of how, we, you know, how they bring Christ into their workplace. Um, and we've had you know, Christian counselors come and talk about that. So Charleston is, you know, they're, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And you, you saw a good testimony of that. Um, in June last year, you know, those, the, the nine at AME who were killed, and 36 hours later, their family members stood up and faced the young men who killed their family and forgave. And they stood in that court and said, I forgive you. I don't know if I could have done that. I don't know if I would have had that strength, but that's what Jesus calls, and that's the heart and soul of Charleston. And we had 30,000 people cross the bridge of Ravenel Bridge across from Charleston to Mount Pleasant in love and peace and praising the great strength of Christ. So there is there's a strong core there. We just need to wake it up a little bit. And that's what the Christian Chamber is going to do. Um, that's what we're doing, God in the workplace. And I appreciate William coming down. And I think that's partly what Renfro will do down there, too, is to... When other businesses see the witness that you know a Renfro Brothers has, or Paul Heinauer with Glass Pro is another good example, you know, they see that and they see it can be done, and they see the power of that witness, of the way people work, and the, the joy they bring to the work, and the the integrity that they have. I tell you what, it, it's that's the greatest witness. I didn't touch on it there, but. One of the things in, when, when we talk about, uh, about witnessing is you do first, speak last. We don't put the cross on our card, not until we know the performance is there. Polydeck showed us that. So. But again, appreciate it. And I, I think it's, it's a great opportunity down there for Renfro. I'm looking forward to, uh, to helping spread the word down there. And if you guys need any help, you know, I'll be glad to do so. Thank you. Thank you.